Well, welcome everybody to the September seven day book challenge. I'm super excited to have you all here. Um, real quick, um, like intro on me, you know, you surely have seen me around obviously in the Facebook group and all of that fun stuff. But uh, back in January, um, kind of used Jarvis to write my first book um, with the AI for my copywriting business. And that essentially rolled into what we've now been running as these seven day book challenges on a monthly basis. I think this is number nine ish nine or 10, something along those, those lines. And so every month um, we kind of bring a new crew of people in that are going to start learning how to use Jarvis to write their books. And um, we keep adding on additional resources as we come to develop them, um, especially right now in the form of recipes, um, the different templates along with the worksheets and these live calls, which are really designed to address um, moments where you guys are, you know, hitting like roadblocks with where you're at and also just to kind of connect on what what you're writing about in your book and how we can support you further yeah so um i run a company called the book patch with uh, my dad victor ostrovsky and uh it's a self-publishing website um that you go on you upload your book and um print and publish through us um so far i joined a part as a partner a few years ago um and have an extensive entrepreneurial background but uh um since then we've published over a hundred thousand titles so um i've seen every book you can imagine i mean you know and really learning what sells what flops what you know what really goes into that publishing process to really make a book successful so uh, when darby kind of started this this challenge we're in the same friend group uh when he started writing that saw that he wrote his book with ai um, I was like, oh, absolutely. This is exactly what we need to do because, you know, the biggest problem that we see in, in publishing and self-publishing is a lot of people start the process of writing a book and they never click publish. So we have hundreds, thousands of people that upload their books and just never get to that point of either printing a manuscript for themselves or, or publishing to the website. So there was a huge disconnect and the people that want to write a book, which is like, 90% of people have it on their bucket list of like, what, you know, write a book, right? And, and people that actually do. Um, and this course and this training that we put together is absolutely the fastest and best way that I've seen it done self-published wise. That's what we want to do here inside of this challenge. So we spend a lot of time on your customer avatar, your why, your market research, um, and creating your voice for what you want to create inside of the book uh, to make that process a lot easier. I know, a, I know a lot of you guys here, this is going to be your first time writing a book in general. Um, it, it is a big process, a big venture to pursue, especially in the context of a seven day challenge, right? But what we find, you know, every single month when we run this challenge is that the constraint of like, okay, you got seven days to get your head down and bust it and get this book out of your head. Um, getting that manuscript out and into the, the format of the outline and expanding on that outline. 20,000, 25,000 words inside of a week is incredibly doable when you just chunk it down piece by piece and uh, how we explore the nonfiction writing of books. Is there anyone that's breaking down a lot of their existing content? Okay. Mike, cool. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We have a lot of people that have tons of podcasts and they transcribe that and then, uh, break it down into a book so that's that's doable inside of this challenge as well and you guys have two pros on here too so melinda and skip um have gone through our challenge before working with us at a higher level and and uh, are great resources too so we'd love for you guys to just share a little bit um i know allison we've talked with you a little bit in the past um, but we'd love to kind of hear you know again what you're going to be working through a few of you guys have shared on the facebook thread i posted this morning um, but would love to kind of connect with you um, while we've got some time on this call about what's the book you guys are writing, um, maybe where where you're looking for the most support um, throughout this week. Ryan, would you be open to starting out? So my name is Ryan Beat. Uh, I'm a licensed realtor here in Northwest Arkansas. Um, I've got a background in marketing and finance, and um, I grew up, as Zach can attest, with um, some... Uh, financially illiterate parents, uh, both went their separate ways, both filed for bankruptcy. So there was no one there to educate me or teach me. I never really got in trouble and they weren't bad parents, but they never gave me the tools to be successful uh, financially. Um, so, you know, I make decent money. My wife makes good money. 
Um, and I find myself working more and more with young couples, entry level buyers that don't have their credit in line, that don't have savings, that don't have their financial puzzle put together. And it's because they don't know. And I'm seeing that be more and more of an issue um, on social media. You always see somebody who makes a joke with a meme that says, uh, I'm glad they talked about parallelograms that uh, should come in handy during parallelogram season, right? Or a lot of people complain that they don't teach finance in schools. So I wanted to write a book that's, you know, there are things that change mindsets. There are things about habits. There are things about um, budgeting and retirement. But I wanted to specifically target uh, people who grew up in a household where they weren't taught just the basic essentials and building blocks. Then you can then uh, get into retirement and savings uh, and be more specific with things like that. So just trying to get everyone's base established. That's really who I want to write a book for. Nice. Is it specific to like first your first time home buyers? There's going to be a real estate play, um, but it's not uh, a sales thing. It's more of a move yourself from rent to own cool. uh, because you're building equity. You can look at Dave Ramsey and everyday millionaire and some other topics. And then uh, the millionaire, next door or millionaire mind i've got them both uh and where they surveyed a bunch of millionaires and one of the common things was they all owned a home they owned they didn't own the fanciest home it was usually 30 40 50 years old it was paid off um so doing some education about how to buy a house when it's appropriate to go from rent to buy sometimes it's not uh, everyone's ready for it and it's definitely not your first step um and providing some guidance there just because you can get a three hundred thousand dollar loan why don't you scale it back and get 175 180 you know you, right you, a lot of times they talk about that's income ratios and how much house you should afford in your budget, but did you already account for retirement and then take the next piece, which would be housing. So uh, it's more of a guidance play. Hey, this is Russ. I'll just jump in. Why not? Right. Okay. <laughs> good, good, good to see everybody. And uh, Zachariah, I was thinking of wearing a hat, but I'm not so worried about it. So. We got to own the ball. Own the ball. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, better, better places to. Uh, oh, here we go. That's 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 good, Ryan. That's just good to see everybody. Um, I may be the oldest one in the group, and for me, this this first book is more of a a mind dump of life experiences. And you know, one of the questions that you asked in the goals is what kind of sales do we want, and. I'm really honestly not focused on sales. I've got some other goals with it with some people I'm working with, but um, just going back, my formal education was in financial planning and counseling. Mm -hmm. And that's different than selling insurance and investments and everything. It's back to the old school style before it got taken over by the, by the uh, big investment corporation. So um, I use that experience into a successful career in community banking where I ran a couple of community banks and a trust company and um, just did a lot of financial planning and strategic planning for the banks that I work with and also began to see that the fundamental level for that kind of education is with the individual because each of us are really the smallest business unit on the face of the earth, whether it's a, a family of one or a family, I'm in Utah, so it could be 14. <laughs> the first book is about taking a personal strategy to a new level and just teaching people how to think. And the way this started was me complaining to my wife is what's happened to everybody? Nobody can think. And I think COVID just brought that out and our political scene and some of the funny things, I'm sure we've all got great experiences to share about things we've seen during the past 18 months and just incredible uh, thought processes that are lacking. And it scared me and I started complaining and my wife said, well, why don't you do something about it? So this is kind of a response to that. And it's getting back to the fundamentals. I've taken the business strategic planning steps and and modified those to uh, an individual and boiled it down to something that's really easy to follow and remember and individuals and families can scale that and it's um, more I, I guess the avatar is more the 20 and 30 somethings because I've been there done that and that was a hard period of my life and 
having some good, strong fundamentals and a mission that, that my wife and I could count on really, really helped. And so that's what I'm trying to do is to reach out to that segment and those that want to accept the work for what it is, maybe implement it, great. Those who don't, my life's not going to be impacted one way or another. People like the book, hate the book, want to burn it, use it for toilet paper or, or hold it up, say, this is great. And there's actually a little uh, organization with someone that they say, well, you write it and I'll go out and I'll, I'll promote it and we'll add other things to it. So great. that's where I'm at. Yeah, that's, that's good. And it's, um, you know, you want to have goals for the book, but also you want to have, you know, the exact experience you want your reader to go through and the impacts you're going to make on them or, or with them more so than I want to sell 10,000, 20,000 books. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but also be clear about that too. I mean, it's good to have goals to reach for, something to reach for, so you can plan accordingly and we can teach you what that looks like throughout the process. Or like, oh, if you need to sell a thousand books you need to do in the first week you need to do this or 250 so getting that out at least having a base and i think i touch on what's what's a good number to have um, um is important but more yeah. importantly is the impact you want to make and the in the journey you want your reader to go through okay allison it's your turn now <laughs> okay so I, i'm an attorney a practicing attorney uh and i was going to write a book for a client you know the avatar being a a client, a potential client of mine, but uh, I decided to write a book to tell, help other attorneys learn how to be happy, <laughs> live happy lives, because I think there's not much of an emphasis on that uh, in the legal field, and I just feel like attorneys are kind of isolated out there in some very strange world where success has nothing to do with happiness and <laughs> And they're smart people, but just the, the factors that they're surrounded by. Yeah, I just want, I, I, I did that for myself and, uh, and, you know, I'd like to help other people. <laughs> How far or long are you with the uh, outline? I put together what I think the chapters will be, but I'm not sure. I, uh, I'm wanting to include like stories from other attorneys. So I'm, in a way, I'm, I'm making it way bigger than it probably <laughs> should be. Um, probably finding ways to make sure that I can't accomplish it in seven days. I, I always recommend finding an accountability buddy for the for the challenge, just to run things by while you're writing. There's there's limited help. I mean, we can you can send it to us, and I can do my best to review it in time. But we we're both are going to have a lot going on. So inside of the challenge, or even in the group too, um, in the writing with Jarvis group or the Jarvis Underground group, looking look for make a mm -hmm. post and. Um, I know Melinda, you had a really, Melinda had a great accountability buddy during her challenge as well. So it just helps to bounce ideas off of when, as yeah. you're writing, because uh, we're not always available, right, you know, uh, uh, to answer questions right away. So I'm Mike, I, I live in Northeast Florida, and uh, I recently sold a portion of my business, I guess about nine months ago, right before moving to Florida. And uh, over that time, I had a uh, I had about eight to 10 clients and I was purposefully whittling them down to just a couple. And uh, I began to really kind of quite frankly, hate my business. So going through kind of a journey of figuring out what is the next phase of my business? How do I want to make it work? How do I want to live the next three to five years of my life? Um, this is actually kind of come into focus. So my goal now and, and where this book fits in is to do the part of my consulting that I really enjoy and got the most value and was able to watch the greatest amount of success occur within my clients, um, I was watching clients fail and there was nothing I could do about it. So essentially, I guess the analogy I use is that I'm going from being a personal trainer to a gym where I'm going to give you everything that you need to succeed, but I'm not going to hold you accountable to actually doing it. You've got to want it for yourself, but I'll show you all the equipment. I'll show you the results you'll get if you follow a workout in this order. And that's essentially what I'm doing is I'm taking a portion of my consulting practice and, and every engagement that, that I've ever had always started off with about um, four to six weeks worth of work really laying the foundation of how to build out a sales growth strategy for a, a software company. And, and a lot of these are going to be in startup or early stage. Uh, and so the, 
what I'm doing is I'm taking all the work that I've done probably two dozen times over the last six years and putting that into a, a step-by-step book with exercises that'll show them how they can build their own strategy. I'm, I'm going to show you how to do it. And if you implement it and you execute it, you'll be successful. If you choose not to implement it or don't commit to it, I can't. You know, that's not my, that's not really my fault. That's not my problem. I've given you the tools. There's three pillars and there's within each three pillar, there's really kind of three topics that have to be addressed. And so that's what my book's going to walk them through. Hey, what's going on? So good. pretty good. Pretty good. Thank you. So I'm Chris. Um, I'm a digital marketer. I'm a founder. I just started my own company uh, last year during the peak of the pandemic. And um, my whole book is about um being uh overcoming my addiction and pretty much making it the best of me so my whole thing is going from a poor man to businessman and uh giving people eight principles towards uh self-mastery all right has everyone gotten through all the pre-challenge work yes yes no I so <laughs> i, I think i i kind of got in a little bit late and i i tried to plow through as much as i could on the bullets and the in the big e- intro email that came but i'm not 100 percent sure i got through it but i Sure. I think I got through a lot of it. Okay. I'm just going to review. I'm going to review. And um, then, yeah, yeah. Everyone should get through that. And tomorrow we'll we'll dive in with um, going into boss mode and Jarvis and and, and all of that as well. So something we do um, here every week during these live challenges is if anyone um, has an outline or close enough to an outline that they'd like to work through live and have questions on certain areas, especially as it relates to using Jarvis to expand on your outline, um, please let me know um, so we can kind of like block you out um, in a 20 to 30 minute slot um, over the course of this week on one of these calls, um, you know, live, live on the spot working through some stuff. I'm sure other people have the same type of questions um, you're having as well. Um, so let me know in the, just with like a why comment and uh, this is Zoom chat and I'll make sure to add you and I'll reach out to you or just shoot me a DM directly. So I'm just going to dive in here. Um, this Chuck Hogan interview, so he's a 20 year Tony Robbins trainer and a good friend of mine. He talks about leading with your why and it's a really great just one hour talk to identify why you're doing this challenge and why you're writing the book that's going to lead you through and and allow you to dive in a little deeper throughout the challenge and then from here you know you have there are kind of four four pillar worksheets right the knowing your why setting your goals for the challenge so yeah knowing your why setting your goals so what are your goals for um, yourself your reader and what your long-term goals are on as an author most of the people doing the challenge most people we see um, have some sort of back end offer that they're selling. If it's consulting, if it's you know your own services, uh, a lot of people want to be seen as the expert in their industry. So that's why they're doing this challenge. So figuring those out and identifying that. The whole reason for Darby and I writing the book was obviously a lead into the challenge and a lead into the higher ticket stuff that we do. Um, and it's been ultra successful at that. So, so yeah. Um, and then find your companion. So we want you guys to join the private Facebook group, join the seven day challenge group and post in there, be active in that community. Um, We try to have everyone share what they're doing and build support around it. So make sure you're joining those. Then sizing up your dragon, right? Going in and seeing what other people in your industry and your niche are talking about, looking at their, uh, their own, you know, their own book, what their chapters are, um, and finding that down, we had a student that we work with, Dave, and I mean, he, he found an, an, a whole niche for himself in the financial world, in the financial planning world, uh, will be super supportive in you. And this will help with your chapter titles, the keywords you want to use, your, to the title of your book, um, the categories you upload, you know, you upload your book in if you're selling on Amazon. This is an excellent, excellent, excellent uh, talk we do with him. We have, I guess now we have different outline processes that, that Darby, you're going to go through tomorrow, right? For doing that line. I mean, it's the same outline. Um, oh. We just, we turned these outlines, the hero's journey and the problem solving outline into Jarvis recipes so that you can just download them at the Jarvis. Um, and those are in that doc. And they're also in the resources section that you'll get to in just a second, Zachariah. 
Yeah. I think the biggest takeaway we found from just like the biggest roadblock, I guess, that I ran into that a lot of the people that come through this challenge run into is just getting the outline on paper first. It doesn't have to be perfect right out the gate. And that's where like Craig Hanley's outline process, one of our early students, right after we he had gotten this um, this process from Craig Hanley's training, he'd been putting off writing his outline for like five, seven years or so. And he was just always at a roadblock. Just set yourself the time, like dedicate like a solid hour to just dump it out if you are running into some some issue getting it out and then go back and worry about refining it after the fact. The more you have this ideal customer avatar figured out and the more you have your why figured out, it'll be more conversational in your writing. And it, it's, it's so supportive along the way. I find a lot of students that we have when they're struggling with their voice, when they're struggling with what to write, it's because they haven't really dove deep into this. Right. So this is so super supportive, either this, this ideal customer avatar and the category and market research, and then organizing your time, being a real estate coach, it's a good friend of ours. He talks about, he's got an 80, 20 principle of breaking down your time and focusing on what's important, especially over the next seven days. Um, we're, we do an hour live call a day, then you have your content that you watch, and then you have your writing on top of that, you know, really time blocking over the next week is going to be super important into for your success. Um, and then this is a breakdown that Darby did with, this is a breakdown Darby did with Reed Florim. He's also kind of a master Jarvis user. Um, they're both, Darby and Reed are both certified Jarvis experts. Um, so this is, they, you guys break down every single tool, right? In, inside of, every single tool inside of, Jarvis. This is uh, more for like the like an additional tools that you guys can use as far as research. And you'll see on the timestamps there um, a few of the reference tools. Um, you know, again, like using things like Udemy, um, similar to that, how you would Amazon. What's an outline for a course on this topic look like? And then here's all the resources throughout the challenge. These are everything we teach. We teach on. Once you get your cover done, we offer a 3D book cover. So you just upload your cover here. And we'll shoot that out to you. That'll make it look like this, like a 3D version of your book. It'll teach you a lot faster how to use the whole program than Zachariah or myself could do on these calls. Take advantage of that resource for sure. Yeah. And they're, they update so quickly too, that it's great to stay on top of that and have a base understanding. This is day one right now of the challenge. So if you haven't gotten through the pre-challenge stuff, get through that. Um, and then day two, we expand from the outline. We're going to do that live with, with one of you. So uh, whichever one of you wants to do it live with us, we'll, we'll break that down. But uh, you can also watch Reed, Reed and uh, Darby go through an outline expansion um, from one of our past students as well. There's always good tidbits of information in those. Um, but I think the real value is doing it live. Um, day three, we have two nibble. They talk about editing. And um, Austin is about crafting the perfect intro. So what we want is this, you guys to watch this content, come on the live calls and discuss any questions that you have um, and things we can break down um, even more, or we can even do another outline expansion. Day four, this is where we have John Livesay coming in to teach live. Um, so you'll, you'll have that more expansion. But the main push here, guys, is the early part of this week, we're trying to get you to 5,000 words. That's the goal, okay? And, and like a sh like somewhat structured 5,000 words from your outline. So if you're just breaking down, let's say you have your chap you have your book outline done. If you're just breaking down your personal story after, so you have your chapter, you have your personal story, like why, how did you learn or earn this information, right? And then the three things you wanna cover, the three bullet points of the chapter, right? And then your conclusion, your hook into the next chapter or your worksheet or whatever you're offering to get people off of your book and into your own atmosphere. That's what you want to focus on. So even if it's have your chapter outline, you then insert your personal story and then what you want to insert into the chat and insert into the book, what you're covering in that chapter. Sorry, that should get you to 5,000 words if you have about 10 or 12 chapters. Day five, uh, we have Two really powerful interviews. Ron Lynch, he's considered the, he's called the $4 billion man. Um, he helped launch GoPro, OxyClean, 
Uh, what what are some of his others? I, he works with Samsung and some very large companies uh, yeah, so, on their marketing. So he has over four billion dollars in product sales attributed to his campaigns, um, and he breaks down script writing, what's important on and all of this that it super supports you in your book. Um, and then James Victoria, he's in. He's a good friend of mine. He's in the Louvre in Paris. He's featured in the Louvre. He's in. He's been featured in the Museum of Modern Art in New York twice. He's like a designer's designer, right? And he breaks down the book cover process. He also has a, a, a best-selling book out called Feck Perfection um, that he talks about as well. Really, really great interview. He is just, he's a, he's a ton of fun. And um, it's really powerful the way he talks about design and cover design, whether you're designing yourself on Canva or Photoshop or whatever you use, or you're getting a designer to do it. Um, that's, that's a really great interview. And then going into the weekend, um, it's kind of your head down moment, right? This entire, this cup, this weekend coming up. So we keep the, we keep the day six and seven pretty light, uh, because we want you focused on writing of doing the final touch-ups to, to your book. Most books are going to come in. Most finished manuscripts are going to come in anywhere from about 15,000 words minimum to 30,000 plus words. Uh, we have students that have 50, 60,000 words right now, and they're trying to pare it down. So um, doing all of that legwork, kind of your darkest hour moment, if you will, will be this weekend of tidying up the manuscript and getting that done. Uh, we show you how to upload to KDP and upload to the book patch. Uh, the, so at my company, the book patch, you'll be able to upload uh, your manuscript and your cover uh, as soon as you're done. And if you Get, and you get a couple printed copies. You can order one copy for yourself. You can order two or three or whatever you want at the end of this challenge and have it shipped to you just so you get to hold a physical copy of this book in your hand. That's super, super powerful when um, that happens. If something you created a week ago, let's see. Yeah, after this weekend, day eight, we come back on Monday and we celebrate how far you've come. You know, not everyone is going to make it. We want everyone to obviously have the intention to finish the manuscript and and then on by the seven days and then day eight, so let's celebrate where you're at. Um, and then we talk about what's next, whether you're going into a launch process for your book um, or you're, you know, starting with your advanced readers. There's a ton of stuff that you can do from that point. Um, so we just hop on and celebrate and talk about all that. Hey, I've, I've got a question for you, is what do you have access to? Like the onepager.io, do you have access to all that? Anything you want me to look at, you can send to me. All right. Um, and I, if, I'll get to it as soon as I can. Um, <laughs> no, and, that's fine. I just didn't know. Sure. Yeah. And, and that's why I say let's post in the group or find someone on this call that can be your accountability buddy um, that you can share share stuff with, say, hey, can you take a look at this? Um, and they'll do that for you. This is a smaller, one of the smaller court, like classes we've done. So we will have a little bit more time. So feel free to send it to me as well. If you have a question or, you know, and, and feel free to send it to me, I'm absolutely available. Okay. All right, great, thanks. Mm -hmm. Do this, right? We're pushing towards the 5,000 words kind of midweek to prep you for the weekend. Um, uh, a, an area we've seen people tend to get stuck is in editing while you're writing. Um, it's far more important to get the words out right now in, in a larger chunk and then whittle it down versus write a chapter, go back and re-edit the chapter, go back and re-edit it again. Um, you'll just edit yourself to death and you'll end up losing a lot of time and progress you can make forward rather than just really just brain dump it out first, come back and refine after the fact. Um, in some of our previous challenges, I mean, we've had, we've had students that come through and like quite literally trash their entire book that they've written after five days of writing, because they had this huge, that idea they were going to write their, their life's work was all going to be put down in this first book they had. It was going to be a 50,000 word, you know, bestseller on the New York times. And, you know, and re the reality is, is that it really doesn't need to be um, this grandiose book right out of the gate in, in every case, right. It's everyone's it's whatever you're using it for. She scrapped her book five days into it and then rewrote her book in like less than 48 hours and published it because she realized that, hey, you know what? I don't need to write this whole book now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to chop it up into volumes and this is going to be like the first edition 
um, in this series of books that I'm going to use. But her purpose for her book was using it as like essentially like a training mechanism for her sales team and also um, prospective clients that wanted to learn about the process that she teaches and, and helps um, people implement her sales process. Very quick, very direct, um, you know, no fluff. Um, right to the point, I think it was around like a 15, 15 to 20,000 word book and it's generated her clients as a result of her publishing it, right? Like just get clear on what you want out of the book and don't add any extra fluff, like make it straight to the point and just walk your clients, your prospects, your readers, um, step-by-step step on how to solve their problem. And the world will start, you know, you'll fill up 15, 20,000 words, no problem. The big thing here is, is this doesn't need to be the one book of your entire life, right? This doesn't have to be that the end all be all perfect masterpiece work. This, this can just be something you use to generate leads. And it's kind of like your toe in the water. Don't beat yourself up and be too hard on yourself. Okay. Let's make this a fun process and provide value, but uh, yeah, don't kill yourself. <laughs> we use the term minimum viable book, right? You no, know, it's like, what is the, like, what do you need to say? To who do you need to say it to? How, like, how much do you actually need to say to get your point across? And is it going to provide the value that you need? The fact that you actually get through and publish a book is far more than most people will ever do. And so, just chunking it down to that that minimum viable edition of your book, and you can go back and you can make updates to it. And the book can grow over time with all the tools that we have access to. Like print off a dozen copies for like a, a close knit group of advanced readers to get some real serious feedback on your book. You can order those from the book batch, no problem, and have a real book inside of your hands in the next couple of weeks. Mike had a question about, um, just DM me about um, pages a 20,000 word manuscript is. Um, it is gonna depend on font size as well as some of the formatting and the size of the book, like the trim. So I'll give you an example. I think our book, the published for Jarvis book, is about 21,000 words and it's right at 100 pages at 12 point font and uh, at a six by nine size. And so that gets you basically like, like this book, 100 pages, 20,000 or so words. Yeah, one, one thing we recommend is just like looking at books that like how, how what does your reader expect to see for your type of book? Like five by eight and six by nine are the like some of the most common uh, actual book sizes for like nonfiction books out there. But if you're like creating a workbook, for example, that, that people are used to expecting them to be like, like this Alex Hormozy book, um, he designed his book a lot bigger. And it's, um, you know, if you guys haven't read this book, by the way, highly recommend it. $100 million offers. Um, great book. But I mean, this book literally follows the exact outline process that we teach here. So along those lines, I was thinking on, on this first book would be, it could be a five by eight, six by nine. And a lot of, it would have diagrams of what a layout of a worksheet might look like, mm -hmm. but then refer them to a website where they could get the resources from there. Everyone here who's like, especially if you're putting your book out there, that's going to have additional tools, resources, worksheets, templates. Um, it's a great, great, great part for you to add in like a call to action to go download. Think about the, the life cycle, the journey of your customers as they read your book. What's the next logical thing for them to get that's going to complement the book? The thought process that I had was the book. You can do exercises right out of it if you want, but if you want the worksheets that I'll give you access to and you can just download and just like we did here, Google Drive, make a copy of it and run with it. Then you go to a site, but you've got to fill out your information to access it. And then similar to like those familiar with StoryBrand, Donald Miller has a, a place where you can go use a worksheet, but he again, doesn't give you everything. He'll give you snippets to help you fill out those worksheets. But if you want the full thing, then you're going to engage with, him or one of their coaches. And so the thought process was educate you on the framework and what's required. You can certainly do it, get the worksheets. It'll give you more. You come back to me if you really want handheld help building out your strategy. There's always a, like three different structures that you, you can follow with, with this kind of stuff. It's do it by your, on your own, right. Which would be like a book or publish with Jarvis is that right. Do it on your own, do it with us, which is this challenge right here. 
or there's always a done for you model. Like we, we don't really do a done for you model because we don't hire ghost writers or anything like that. Being clear people. about that and being upfront in the book is a really important thing too. Like we try to be clear that like, Hey, our goal with this book is to help you get published. And hopefully, you know, if it's a good fit, then maybe you work with us at our higher level coaching and mastermind one, you know, person picking up his book, the book crushes it. You know, they really love it. You know, they fall in love with you as the author and they want to work with you and they actually qualify. You know, that's, that's why books are the best lead generators, right? You're generating high quality prospects, um, building a lot of rapport with your leads on that, on that time frame, and then helping people get to the point where they actually can work with you, right? That's an important part. So one of the things that kind of became concerning to me a little bit uh, not cold sweat, but I was definitely nervous about it, is if I go and look at what I want to produce versus what's out there in the mainstream, and I know a lot of the authors, or at least I know their names, nobody's writing a book the way I want to write it in terms of like a workbook. The closest you get is like a Donald Miller style of book, but nobody's doing it relative to sales. I found one guy who's, you know, when I dug into who he was, I was recognized his name, but dug into who he was. He's like in the Middle East and he makes a ton of money on Udemy and he was using his book to drive Udemy to drive then one-on-one. -on -one. My concern became, you know, if nobody's doing it, is that, is that a market opportunity or a really bad idea? Nobody's really doing that. So that kind of caused me a little bit of concern like, okay, well, crap, if this is about selling books, this could be a bad idea. But if this is leading to a higher big ticket item, and maybe then I'm still fine and just forget about that. Forget about worrying about that. You know, a lot of books teach just concepts, right? And, and then they're like, well, if you want the worksheets and all that, either the worksheets are an upsell or, right, the, the, uh, there's always an upsell there. Um, and a lot of times people do concept inside the book and then worksheets on the side um, as an upsell. But I think provide as much value as you can. Uh, and then the people that, you know, work with you at a higher level are going to be the people that, okay, that say, okay, this guy knows, knows what he's talking about. I'm just going to hire him. Right. I'm just going to go to the site and hire him. And that's, that's what you want. You're bringing so much value on the front end that it's clear. In this day and age, I'm and especially where I live in Florida, I can no longer do executive briefings. Mm -hmm. I can't put 50 people in a room and turn that into a $50,000 engagement anymore. It doesn't work that easy anymore. So the book is the executive briefing that yep. leads to the bigger engagement. All right, guys, we have your work cut out for you for the day. Um, we will see you tomorrow at the same time.